Today we're going to take a closer look at the new Honda CBR650R. We'll dive into everything you need to know about it from the nitty gritty details to what changes were thrown at it this year, how it stacks up against other sport and super sport motorcycles in the lineup as well as the possibility of a cheaper CBR750R replacement on the way. Plus how we're gypped nope. here in the US compared to other corners around the world and a lot more when it comes to this bike. A bike that used to be called the CBR650F until Honda's marketing team realized that ours sell bikes. Arr, matey. So the F was swapped to an R back in 2019 to try and help boost sales in their middleweight sport bike class, a class that until the 650 was introduced in 2014 was being occupied exclusively by the super sport CBR650. RR after the CBR 600 F4i met its demise in 2006, ending that run of the CBR F models that ended up giving us the double R platform that started in 2003 with the 600 double R and was followed up a year later with the CBR 1000 double R. Long story short though, think of the CBR 650R as a modern day CBR 600 F4i to run alongside the 600 double R as a cheaper option, but not as good. In some aspects is the almost two decade old F4i thanks to the 650 being slower with less horsepower and more weight among other things when compared against its predecessor. We need to get back on topic though and before we do that, if you find my content helpful and or enjoy it, what? I know that last part is a stretch there, but if you'd like to help keep these videos coming, please consider checking out the join button below and some of these support links in the description to help keep this train chugging along as without your support, my days are numbered. Now with that being said, let's dive into the CBR650R and first up, let's take a look at options. Do you have any? Nope, ABS is no longer an option and when it comes to colors, well, if you watch my videos, then you know where this is going. Unlike other corners around the world that see multiple color options for this year, we're stuck with one. Are you serious? Yep. Just one, and it's this Grand Prix red, but I do have to say, if we're only getting one, at least they knocked it out of the park. I'm curious though, out of all the other options around the world for this year, which one do you wish we had the opportunity to buy here in the States or in your country? Next to this red, that pearl white has to be my personal favorite, but let me know what you guys think. Next up, let's get to the chassis and suspension before we get into the engine, electronics, and more. The CBR650R has a steel diamond frame unlike the aluminum frame on the old F4i, which is partly to blame for its curb weight coming in at 456 pounds, and here's how that stacks up against some of the others in the model lineup. The 650's frame uses press swing arm pivot plates and has twin elliptical spars and that move from pressed steel rather than forged in 2019 on this bike helped them shave off 4.2 pounds alone, and the same can be said for its naked sport bike sibling with the CB650R. Now when it comes to suspension, up front you have a 41mm inverted Showa separate function big piston fork that's held in place by forged aluminum triple clamp. With this fork setup you have a separation damper in one fork tube and a spring mechanism in the other, and in theory this offers better damping while saving weight when compared to a standard fork setup, but are they adjustable? Nope. Unlike the older and cheaper 600F4i that had an adjustable setup. So nowadays if you want an adjustable fork, you've got to hop up to the Super Sport lineup with the 600RR. And that leads us over to something that is adjustable, and that's your rear shock. You've got a Showa shock out back that only offers preload adjustability, whereas that extra couple grand on the double R brings in rebound and compression damping adjustments into the mix as well. And helping the rear suspension do its thing is the aluminum swing arm that it's attached to via a pillow ball joint, which helps to bring in 5.1 inches of travel in the rear, and up front you've got 4.7 inches of travel, and its seat height comes in at 31.5 nine inches, which is right around the norm for most sport bikes. Now to help the suspension do its thing, you have a set of 17 inch aluminum wheels, which are pretty much the industry standard and they are 0.97 and 1.2 pounds lighter than the previous CBR650F wheels. And with these, you have the usual sport bike size tires with a 12070 up front and a 18055 out back, which is a good thing. Why? because that opens up the door for the best sticky icky for those that want to play with this bike where it belongs 
And even if that's not your riding style, you've got a million different options to choose from when it comes to rubber. And working with those tires to help bring you back home in one piece are the brakes. Up front, you've got a set of dual radial mounted four piston Nissan brake calipers that are biting down on a set of 310 millimeter floating rotors. While out back, you have a smaller 240 millimeter disc that's paired up with a single piston caliper and why so small? Well, I'll tell you why. Well, most of your braking is done via the front brakes, and it's the same reason why most car brakes are larger in the front than in the rear. And to help aid in slowing you down safely, this bike comes standard with Honda's two-channel anti-lock braking system, which definitely helps to give you a little more confidence while braking, no matter the conditions you're riding in. But I gotta say, I wish every bike with ABS had a button to be able to turn it on and off. But what do you guys think? Now let's dive into the engine and drivetrain. The CBR650R is sporting a 649cc liquid-cooled 30-degree dual overhead cam 16-valve inline 4-cylinder. This 67 by 46 mm bore and stroke engine with 11.6 to 1 compression ratio is pumping out 94 horsepower at 12,000 RPM and 46 foot-pound of torque at 9,500 RPM. A healthy bump over the CBR500R and slightly less than the 600RR, but that's yet another reminder, engine size does not determine horsepower. Now we could really geek out about this engine and how its asymmetric piston skirts help to minimize bore contact and how they use ferrous spines on the outer surface of the cylinder sleeves to reduce oil consumption, but my analytics show most of you click off these videos when I dive into that kind of stuff, so I'll include a link below to HondaProKevin.com where I dive more into those nitty gritty details like that. And while not as cool looking as the intake setup on the CB650R, you've still got twin ram air ducts right below the headlights to help feed the engine with its downdraft intake layout. We need to put that power to the ground though, and to do that, you've got a six-speed transmission with the an assist slipper clutch to help ease up shifts, but most importantly, to help prevent the rear wheel from locking up during aggressive downshifts. And per usual with most Hondas, maintaining this four cylinder engine won't break the bank as you can see here by its maintenance schedule. Now let's bounce around the bike and touch on a few different things. Storage, do you have any? Well, kinda. Like with most sport bikes, storage is an afterthought. You've got a little bit of room under the passenger seat to throw stuff and that's it, which is also where you'll find your toolkit. Wait, a toolkit? Yep, an Allen wrench. Wow. This area also shines a light on another thing we're gypped on here in the US, as this 650 comes standard with a USB-C power socket overseas, but yeah, not here in the States. Now when it comes to electronics, you've got an LCD display to help you keep tabs on things from what gear you're in with the gear position indicator, but it also has a shift light and peak RPM indicator too, all of which are adjustable plus the usual stuff with average fuel consumption and so on. It doesn't stop there though, as it also helps you keep an eye on your HSTC system, and that stands for the Honda Selectable Torque Control, or in layman's terms, traction control. It's there to help try and prevent you from giving it a little too much power and stepping the rear out, but if you're in the mood for a little fun, it can be turned off, which surprisingly enough is something that our US spec 600RR doesn't have, although the JDM spec does, among other things, but that's another 10 minute rant video on its own. But how about accessories? As to most of us, modifying our toys is a massive part of the overall fun factor. Honda offers up a few goodies ranging from tank and tail bags to help add a bit more storage, as well as things like heated grips, double bubble windscreens, a 12 volt accessory socket, and more. The most fun item though is hands down the quick shifter and call me crazy, but I think these and the seat cow should be standard equipment these days. And yeah, there's not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but that's where the aftermarket world comes into play with a million different things you can buy to customize your 650R. Now, what did Honda change for this year on the CBR 650R? Well, first up, they swapped out the yellow shock spring out back for red. Yay. Exciting, I know. And they also blacked out the rear fender brackets as well as swapping out the matte black metallic paint option for this Grand Prix red that hasn't been seen here in the States since 2020. And last but not least, a change that none of us like, 
a price increase, but thankfully it was only 100 bucks. Which leads me to a question for you guys. What do you think Honda needs to change next on the CBR650R to bring it to the next level? And how many of you hope Honda keeps the inline four cylinder around? The reason I ask is because the writing's on the wall with more and more manufacturers dropping their four bangers for a twin or triple, and with the introduction of the CB750 Hornet that is significantly cheaper than its CB650R counterpoint, while offering a lot more tech while also being lighter too, leads you to wonder when this CBR650R may be phased out for an upcoming CBR750R with the parallel twin power plant. I'm working on a video diving more into my thoughts and the possibilities behind all of that, but let me know what you guys think about it all below, and Honda does pay attention to these videos, so let your voices be heard down in the comments section and let's talk about it all, as these videos aren't just for me to ramble on. But on that note, thanks for watching, and if you'd like to help support the future of these videos, please consider checking out the membership options by clicking on the join button below, or check out some of the other support links down in the description. And that's a wrap for this one, and a big thank you again to our supporters for helping to keep this train chugging along, and we'll see you guys in the next one, but first, 